Let's do another example involving displacement, this time using a different method of indicating direction. Dylan stands on a running track. If he runs 50 meters down the track, his distance is obviously 50 meters. No direction needed for a scalar quantity like distance, so simply 50 meters. Now, let's talk about his displacement. Well, we may decide that he starts moving down the track towards the school. So let's say that positive is the direction towards the school, which would mean that negative would be in the opposite direction, that is, down the track away from the school. His displacement vector arrow is this. After running his plus 50 meters, if he were to turn around and start running back towards the starting line, we'd say his next displacement was a negative one. If he stops halfway back to the starting line, we'd say his second displacement was negative 25 meters. Again, the 25 meters is the magnitude, and the negative indicates his direction. We could show his second displacement arrow as this. If we add these two displacements together, that is, follow the arrows from tail to head, then tail to head, we end up with a total displacement of plus 25 meters. That is, Dylan's displacement at this point is exactly 25 meters towards the school. Now, what if he didn't stop there, but he continued on back to the starting point for his next drill? In this case, the total distance is 100 meters. 50 meters out, 25 back, and another 25 back. Nice and simple. The total displacement would be, hmm, remember that we are considering total displacement, and that's the direct route from the start to the end. Well, what if the start and the end are in the exact same position? Like in this case, the starting line of the track. Well, the displacement, therefore, would have to be zero. The distance is 100 meters, but the displacement is zero. Let's consider Dylan's run using the vector arrows. We could show that the first half of his run with this arrow, and then the second part of his run would be shown here, and the third part with this arrow. The three arrows added lead us right back to the starting point and therefore the resulting total displacement would have to be zero. We could also consider the total displacement using our positive and negative directions. First we have plus 50 meters, and then a negative 25 meters, or minus 25 meters, and then another negative 25 meters, and you add them all up and they are zero, so it does make sense. Note that this would all be true if we used other forms of direction. For example, 50 meters north plus 25 meters south and another 25 meters south would add up to zero as well. In this tutorial, we looked again at displacement and this time focused on how positives and negatives can effectively be used to indicate the directions of vectors.